Hey guys, happy new year. Welcome to another video from NZ Pocket Guide. We are the largest travel to new the la largest travel guide to New Zealand and we are doing this live session every single week to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of traveling in New Zealand. Are we Laura? Yes, that's right. This is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com which as Robin says is New Zealand's largest travel guide and we literally have thousands and thousands of articles on the website to help you plan the perfect trip to New Zealand, of course, when you are actually able to come to New Zealand. We don't really need to tell you why you can't come to New Zealand. I'm sure you all know by now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's no such thing as uh, planning too early. So if you want to learn more about New Zealand, nzpocketguide.com is what we humbly think is the best place to go to plan your trip. But if you're not really into reading, we also do this live Q&A session every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. So you guys can come straight onto the live chat and ask your New Zealand travel questions directly to us. But if you do miss the live session, we also pull questions together um, um, in the comments section of any of our YouTube videos. So you can go ahead and ask your questions there as well. Um, and if you want to know when the next scheduled live session is, we do have a handy link in the description below, which tells you when our next scheduled live sessions are in your time zone. Here you go. So first up, obviously, Happy New Year. We did celebrate New Year only, uh, but it was 48 hours ago, I think, in New Zealand. Was it about 48 hours ago? I think we're on the 4th of January yeah, now. On the 3rd of January yeah, so we, now. We're behind, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, we're ahead of time, so yeah. Mm. Uh, all right, so as per usual, we're going to read every comment we receive in the live chat and so all your questions. We already have Extreme Talauta that says Morena. Uh, Morena. Morena, mate. Uh, that, so if you guys don't know what Morena means, it means... Good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language. We also have Rivin that says, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New happy Year, year. Rivin. Extreme Talauta says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Anthony Comstock says, Morena from California, USA. Abhishek says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, <laughs> Abhishek. Um, and we also had Usna Jabin that says, Hello, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> I think we're going to get that a lot uh, That's okay. on this one. <laughs> it does matter. Can you say Happy New Year to that guy? And then Benny Grayling says, Happy New Year, awesome people. Happy New Year. Yay. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, Usna was saying, uh, hello, Happy New Year. Can I know uh, the, when the border are going to open for partnership visa holder? I haven't met my hubby for the last two years. Um, so we have a full video on when the borders will be opening, uh, or at least our predictions. It's it's not official. There's been no official announcements. But we have a full video. It's pretty easy to find for you, Usna. You just go on our channel, and then you click on video, and then you look at the la latest video, which is like a red and yellow big thumbnail, and that says New Zealand border opening predictions. And we actually talk about that. But in short, we see an opening of the New Zealand border uh, around between... Uh, uh, you know, November, December 2021 or, uh, you know, during the year 2022 at some point. So, yeah, there is a quite a long delay until this will open. Uh, there may be some exceptions along the way, but I, I, we don't see it opening too, too fast. Uh, okay, what else do we have? We have Clay that says, Morning all, uh, from a super wet central Otago. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty rainy in the north and then yesterday as well. And I think it probably gonna be rainy today as well quite a lot so yeah it is it's just gonna be a it's a good start of the year for plans that that's all i'm gonna say uh anthony comstock says because i am in a home provider i get my vaccine shot on monday oh that's awesome so you're probably gonna be our first viewer to ever get your vaccine so uh next week make sure you tell us how it went and you know if you feel uh, all uh super powered after getting your <laughs> vaccine yeah yeah, yeah. Kashish says, when student visa open? Um, so we think the student visas will reopen, um, you know, at some point in 2021, but nowhere near, uh, you know, nowhere near the first quarter of the year. That's for sure. So I don't think, we don't think that the February 2021 intake is going to take place. Uh, we don't think that's going to be the case. Obviously, it's not official information. There has not been any real official information. But our gut feeling is that around uh, mid to late 2021, um, this may happen. So, think maybe like august september or maybe later so that's uh, that that's kind of our good feeling right now but there is nothing official just yet karen alami says hey guys happy new year 2021 Woo, happy new year karen can you read this one here 
Um, Rack says, hi, guys. Happy New Year. Just want to know how far is Antarctica from New Zealand? Um, although New Zealand is one of the sort of closest countries to Antarctica, um, it's still about 5,000 kilometers away from New Zealand. So it's not exactly a, a, a quick flight there but um, or, a, or a quick boat trip or anything. But um, it's true that uh, New Zealand and particularly Christchurch is uh, one of the sort of launch points for many um, like international science uh well scientists going to antarctica to do research so there's a little uh, little tidbit for you there kiwi lauren all the way from canada says hello from saskatchewan canada happy new year kiwi lauren by the way just about to head out to tobogganing with my family but i had to pop in and say hi oh, oh that's, that's really nice. nice i like it we appreciate that clay uh forgot to say happy new year with a ton of emojis there is a lot of beers um, I see I see as much beers as, as party emojis. So, I, I, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> this is why we're a, little, <laughs> we're a little groggy today as well. Um, Kashish says, student visa border open for India students. Uh, yeah, we just talked about that, uh, Kashish. So, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, you, the answer we gave you was um, satisfactory. But the best way to find your information is to go on immigration.govt.nz. That's the only one official information source. Nargis says, Happy New Year from Iran. Oh, that's oh, really cool. cool. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year all the way to Iran. I don't know how to say Happy New, Happy New Year in Persian, but that, that's, yeah, too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Mariano says, Aloha, Aloha. Is it the weekend already? <laughs> yeah, no, I can't believe we're already the third. We're already the third through into <laughs> your sorry. voice cracking. Uh, um, yeah. This is a hard one today, guys. I have to be honest. <laughs> We did patch all of the lights and everything together very much at the last minute. <laughs> um, Rivin says, RSE employers can hire SSE employees from anywhere, can they? Um, so we are not immigration advisor. So legally, we do not have the right to answer immigration questions. So we don't have the right to answer something that specific. Sorry. You are able to contact Immigration New Zealand directly and they give you all the information you need. They're pretty helpful. Um, so yeah, so please contact Immigration New Zealand. So there is a law in New Zealand. You do not legally have the right to give immigration advice if you're not a registered immigration advisor. Uh, Adil says, Morena. Morena, Morena, Adil, how are you doing today? Uh, Clay says, we came back up to Queenstown just in time. All the state highway closed from slips and flooding. Such a shame that we may be stuck here for longer. Oh my God. So yeah, it, if you guys don't know, it has been raining a lot in the last, let's say two days in New yeah. Zealand. And uh, yeah, it's it, because the you know all the ground and everything was extremely dry since we're in summer. Then as soon as you get a lot of flooding, like it's just easier to break more cells of ground and mm. kind of have like you know landslip and all that. Yeah, and since most of the road in New Zealand are either on the coast under a big cliff or all those kind of things, <laughs> <laughs> there is always landslip. Yes. Um, Kashish says thank you, sir. You're very welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am, as well. <laughs> Um, Martina Stan, all the way from Germany. She says, "Hello, guys! All the best for 2021. Hope we will get uh, soon uh, get so. Hope we will soon get rid of COVID. Yeah, I yeah. mean, hopefully. I just don't think it's gonna happen in 2021. I just don't want to put too much hope in 2021 mm. because otherwise the disappointment is gonna be too big. Like it is bound to be better than 2020, but since 2020 was that bad, I just don't think it's gonna be a great <laughs> year. It's just gonna be better, and, and you know, I'll settle for better this year." Um, but yeah, fingers crossed, you know, um, we, we hope for the best. Do you want to read what Abhishek says? Um, Abhishek says, hi, any updates about partnership dependent visa, spouse of student, any chances in first quarter? You know, so there has been no update. So the answer to your question is no, there has been no update at all right now. Any chances in the first quarter of 2021? Highly unlikely yeah. in our opinion. Um, we don't think that the New Zealand borders will reopen until late 2021, which is November or December 2021, or in 2022. Um, you know, it's just it's just the way the way we see things happening. We hope to be wrong, hopefully. We we want, you know, as many people as possible to be able to come to New Zealand, you know, meet their family, or even come on a working holiday visa and have an awesome gap year. Um, but yeah, we just don't see that happening 
anytime soon just because of the policy that New Zealand has announced. We have a full video on the channel in which we actually detail our prediction and uh, why we think all that. And there's a lot of different information. We quote a lot of information, uh, sorry, official sources. And so to find this video, it's pretty easy. You just have to head to um, uh, the video tab of our channel and then pick the video, the latest video with like big red and yellow thumbnail that says New Zealand border predictions. Um, so yeah, there is a, they, I don't know, we just don't see it opening too soon. There may be some small changes in policy or some more allowance into the quarantine areas. And so maybe if you can get into a quarantine, you can pay for the, you know, 3,100 New Zealand dollars for the quarantine, stay 14 days in the quarantine. Maybe perhaps there may be some changes in that way. But, you know, this would be reserved for people that already have their visas probably and not necessarily for people which, you know, don't even have the visa just yet. So it will take some time. And uh, yeah, I just don't want you to have all your hopes up because the, the, the year number changed in your calendar. Everything is going to change. I think that the New Zealand policy are set to stay in place for quite a long time. I don't like giving bad news. Um, Abraham Barnabas says, Happy New Year, brother. You guys are doing a great are doing great watching from nigeria oh happy nice. new year happy all new year. the way to nigeria that's awesome yeah. i love to see how many different countries we have here if i haven't named your country just yet just tell us where you guys are from i love that um michael connell this one we know he's from new zealand says good morning i hope you guys had a great start of the new year yes can yes. you hear our crackling voices <laughs> and our half open eyes can you see that <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely yeah. fun. We certainly enjoyed it with a classic uh, kiwi barbecue in the nice sun just before all the rain started, yeah. basically. So we we're pretty lucky. It was quite um, nice, actually. As soon as we got inside, it started raining. Yes. That, was, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, big barbecue. So that's the thing. That's kind of like the best way to kind of do the new year in New Zealand. That's more, at least the most traditional way to do new year in New Zealand. You know, you hang out with your mate, you do a barbecue in the sun. Uh, because it's obviously summer, so it's very mm. different than, than any other places. Uh, usually you hop on the boat and you go at the, you know, and on the sea, on the ocean, or on the lake. Uh, you know, yes, basically one of, the one many of those. bodies of water. Yes, so <laughs> hop on the boat. And uh, yeah, so basically classic Kiwi uh, New Year. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So we have some Persian. Um, Saleh no Mubarak. Here you go. Uh, that is Happy New Year in Persian. Oh, and cool. with a French accent in probably butchered and <laughs> not well pronounced. But I like that. That's nice. Navin Joshua says, Hi, Robbie and Laura. Uh, uh, Were the health of an organization vaccine approval will take uh, any changes on the border restrictions? So we thought it would. But if you do watch our border opening predictions, you will notice that the New Zealand government has kind of uh, pretty clearly said that they wanted to see how the vaccine uh, rollout would work in other countries and learn from them before doing a rollout in New Zealand, which means that if they want to learn medium and long term, it will take six to uh, six months to a year in order for them to draw the conclusions they want before rolling out the vaccine in New Zealand. So, so far, New Zealand hasn't showed any sign of having the vaccine, starting vaccinating people, and are... Um, you know, being willing to kind of like okay, say, okay, we're going to do massive rollout and we want to vaccinate like, you know, two millions out of the five million people here. They haven't done any of that. They haven't voiced any of that just yet. Um, the only thing that they said was, we want to see how it works in other countries, such as in the UK, in the US, and, and in other countries, get some data and then decide how we want to proceed on our side. Mm. So for this reason, we were kind of like, thinking maybe the fact that the vaccine has already been, you know, hastily approved by other uh, you know, organization, worldwide organization, or other countries probably won't make a massive change to the New Zealand border opening. Hopefully, we would, we'd like to be wrong. And hopefully, you know, um, anyone that gets a vaccine or anything like that would be able to get in New Zealand really easily. That's a hope. But it doesn't look like it's going to be the case because the New Zealand population is not set fully vaccinated in, in, in quite, a, quite a while. So because of all those reasons, we, we kind of took a... a kind of a slower approach and, and and decided to predict that the borders may open only in late 2021 or early 2022 for all those reasons. Um, obviously, we're not an official news source. Uh, you know, all of that is just speculation and predictions from two bumbling talking head on the couch. <laughs> uh, you know, we obviously did some research into that. So I'm not saying we just literally, you know, drew a number out of a hat, but we did some research into it, but we are not uh, an official news source. So the best way to kind of, to find official information is the Ministry of Health website of New Zealand, um, the Immigration New Zealand website, um, or any news information such as Radio New Zealand. So one of the things I want to point out 
uh, by the way, is that a lot of you guys, sometimes when you send us comments, I notice that you're having uh, a lot of um, information from third-party websites. It's a bit dangerous sometimes. So if the website doesn't finish by govt.nz at the end, so .govt.nz, it's probably not the official immigration website. There are a lot of dodgy immigration advisors which are getting a well, you know, a, that get a design of their website that closely match what Immigration New Zealand has. And uh, yeah, that's dangerous. Don't do that. govt.nz at the end of the URL, very important. Anyway, Damien Rez say, hello, best wishes for you. Best wishes for you too, Damien. Mm. Thank you for joining us on another uh, live session. That's awesome. He says, uh, watching you uh, became my habit. Oh, well, oh, hanging out cool. with you became a habit mm. as well. Look at that. We all hang out together. Um, it's, it's quite cool. I like yeah. that. I like that we have some people that just come regularly, like Adil, Abhishek comes regularly, Michael, Michael, of course, is here. Um, yeah, we also have uh, Ma Marie, Maria, Mariana Stan from Germany, Kiwi Lauren as well. No, it's Martina, Martina, I think. Martina, yes. Um, and Extreme Talauta. Yeah, Extreme Talauta. We also have MB, sometimes that show up so a little bit late. Yeah. Um, he always pops in at the end. Speaking of Clay, what does he say? Um, Clay asks, have you done the Earnshaw, Earnshaw trip? I think he means the TSS Earnslaw trip, maybe. Been on it for a coffee before, but not for a ride. So have seen inside um, the trip worth it. Um, well, if you've already seen inside, um, the other option is to go across Lake Wakatipu to go to um, the uh, farm station over there. What's the station called over there? Can you um, remember? Oh, um, oh, no. Mall? No, it's not Mall. Small skin. It is. It is. I can't believe I can't remember what the name of the... It's a big no, farming station. Yeah. Oh, it's on it's the tip it's of my tongue. To <laughs> yeah. It's going to come back to me. You know, tonight in bed, I'll be like, oh, that word. You know, yeah, so, so basically the other option is you take um, this historic steamship over to this farm station where they do several different things. Um, if you go during the daytime, I believe that they do a bit, they either do some sort of like, it depends what the season is, but maybe sheep shearing demonstrations or working dog demonstrations. Um, but otherwise, if you go in the evening, I think they usually put on sort of like an evening buffet type thing over there. So, I mean, if you're interested in um, the, like learning more about um, high country um, farming station in New Zealand, then it might be of interest to you. And I know that Clay has uh, children and it's usually a good thing to do with kids because it's quite interactive. And I think you get to like, you get to pet some farm animals and stuff. Um, so if you want to go for that purpose, perhaps it is worth it. But otherwise, if you're not really interested in that aspect of things and you've already been on it, on the yeah. cruise before then yeah otherwise i'd say it's probably not worth it yeah if you've been on the boat like you will not see more of the boat if the boat is moving or not so, yeah. yeah team lusty says uh, hello ma'am and sir oh i like that thank you hello how are you hello. doing says i uh, hope you guys are doing good i want to ask what about international students when they can move back to new zealand from nepal um, so something currently the new zealand borders are closed uh, so we think that there's going to be some um some kind of program to kind of try to get more students into New Zealand within 2021. But uh, as I said at the beginning of this video, it's highly unlikely that it's going to happen in the first quarter. So the February 2021 intake is probably not going to happen. Um, but yeah, if they work something out and uh, and students are willing to go into the quarantine facilities and all that and paying this extra fees for the quarantine, which is 3,100 New Zealand dollars, it's not cheap. Uh, then at that point, maybe there's going to be some more students coming within but the, the, the later half of, of 2021. So let's say let's say probably August or September 2021. So that's that's the only thing that we can see as far as right now. Hopefully things are changing better and for the better soon. But um, yeah, we're not 100% we're not sure. Robert says, Qantas or Air, to New or Air New Zealand from Canada, any preference? They're both about the same. Like they're, they're very, very similar airlines. Qantas tend to be a slightly bit cheaper, so I would go for Qantas if I were you. But there is not much difference between those two airlines. You know, if you work like trying to compare, co compare that. If you were to try to compare like Singapore Airline or, 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 or Cathay Pacific, which are way above what Air New Zealand and Qantas do, then at that point, I would definitely um, tend to suggest one of those other airlines. But if you just compare between Air New Zealand and Qantas, honestly, they're pretty much the same. So just go for which one is cheapest. In a, as a general rule of thumb, Qantas tend to be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, cool. Um, 
MB, actually, I was talking about MB. He says, I'm not late, I'm just listening. That mm. like that. <laughs> I was just teasing. Um, and yeah, Clay was talking about the autocorrect. Uh, MB is wishing Happy New Year to everybody. So everybody wish Happy New Year to MB. Here you go. I like that. Christina Holden, all the way from Australia, says she's sorry she's late, but she says Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yay! 2021 will be awesome. Um, Clay says, uh, my thought exactly. So he's responding to the uh, TSS Unslow. Um, I just wasn't sure where it goes and what there was to do. Um, that's some food for thought. Cheers. You're very welcome. We're here for all the food for thought needed. Yes. Have a feast. <laughs> all the food for thought we give feast you. Feast on your thoughts. Uh, Tim Lusty give us some love from Nepal. Christina says, Happy New Year to MB. Um, Masis Azizi says, I hope you're well. We're well. Thank you very yes. much. How are you feeling today? Mm -hmm. are, are you like hopeful for 2021 or are you just feeling down because just yet another year? <laughs> He says, can you let me know if there is any, if there is holiday, how long it continues? Uh, there are holidays in New Zealand, you mean? Like, is there a public holiday? Is that what you mean? So if we are talking a strictly public holidays uh, for like people not having to go to work uh, on Tuesday, so that's 48 hours from now, people are going back to work um, because you have like the day after New Year's, which is a public holiday, but it fell onto a Saturday. So it has to be observed later. So it's observed on Monday. I think, I think that's how that works. Well, obviously, we work for ourselves. So we kind of work whenever we kind of feel like working. So we're working on Monday, for instance. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's when the public holidays are. As far as the school holiday, I think there is another week of school holiday. And so yeah. not this coming Monday, but the following ones, so that's going to be Monday the... Um, Monday the 11th I think this is when uh, the school holidays are finished but here's what I'm going to be doing uh, for you Massey um, I'm going to ask Clay Bryant because I know you have kids Clay when is the school holiday finishing because I, I don't know if that's what you're asking but just in case yeah. Um, so Clay is living in Dunedin which is in New Zealand and he does have kids so I'm pretty sure he's fully aware when does he you know kind of get a quieter house so mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask Clay if you can tell me when the uh, school holiday uh, finish. I'll be able to give the dates to people easily. I just don't have them in front of me. Uh, so yeah, hang on, uh, Masi. Uh, you know the, the real answer, correct answer is coming in a minute. Niraf Patel says, um, "It says, can you let me know about migrants who have an, have open work visas?" Okay. Um, as far as, as we know right now, so the borders are closed of New Zealand, so that's just not happening um, yeah. at the moment, sadly. So we don't have any information. Masi, uh, uh, Clay says, from memory, it's the second week of February. So it's very wrong. The kids are still wow. going to be roaming around New Zealand until, uh, you know, around the 14th of February. I did not realize it was that long. That is a lot of time. Um, is that? Oh, yeah, that's a summer holiday. I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose it is like oh, usually... usually uh, from Europe, uh, in Europe, we usually have our summer holidays for schools, which usually last about six weeks. I think it's usually July, August time. Um, but yeah, since summer is um, falling right now in New Zealand, um, I guess it makes sense to have a, a summer holidays for schools right now. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're still talking about the TSS Unslow, which is a tour that you can do in Queenstown, in which you go uh, on Lake Wakatipu all the way to a, a sheep uh, farm, a sheep station. And Michael Connell gives his take on that. Oh, um, yeah. Michael Connell is a local as well, and he travels extensively around New Zealand in his camper van. He's actually about to head to the South Island again. And he says the boat trip is awesome, as you get to see the coal driven steam uh, image in action with the coal stokers in action. Uh, you travel to Walter Peak Station. Here Walter you go. Ah, oh, it was just. It. Oh, yeah, tip I, of the tongue. I thought it began with a W, but I just could not remember the yeah. name. Yeah. And he says, we didn't get off there, but uh, there is cafes and activity to do there. Uh, he says, the trip wasn't cheap, but you can get good deals. And that's why we did it. Nice. So, yeah, Walter Peak. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, yeah. So. If you are into like, you know, coal driven steam engines and everything, yep, go ahead. We actually did a lot of like those kind of tours when we did uh, some old uh, train, you know, steam trains and everything. So we've yeah. done quite a few of those around New Zealand, including one when I was literally my, almost my head in the furnace when we yes. did this in Gisborne. <laughs> Robin uh, got to ride up front in the actual locomotive itself. Smelly, sweaty, noisy. <laughs> I understand why we, you know, technology improved. Yes. Holy moly, that was a, a real man's job. I can tell you that. <laughs> I was kind of feeling like this is not for me. This is not for <laughs> me. <laughs> I'd rather be in the carriages right now. <laughs> I want to be one of those luxurious peasants that just yes. kind of get carried. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know how the sausages are made. Ah. <laughs> 
Um, uh, okay, MB is talking about Canada. This is Canada is a beautiful country from what I saw. Uh, I wouldn't feel the need to visit another country if I lived there. Oh, oh there you go. Interesting. Mm. I, I did spend some extensive time in Canada, and it is indeed very, very beautiful. So it's a really nice country. Mm. Can you uh, read what Zaid Nab says? Okay, Zaid Nab says, what date are they opening the borders? Well, there has been no official information just yet of when the borders are opening. Basically, no one knows when the borders are opening. Um, so, yeah, it's just a sort of wait and see sort of, um, uh, yeah, what, what we're doing right now is just waiting to see what happens. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, we can't actually give you a solid answer on that one. But you can watch one of our um, predict border predictions videos. We do have that on the channel of when we, based off, um, you know, official announcements that have been made in New Zealand, like sort of quotes from um, from the government and stuff and stuff of when they think they might be, you know, starting to let select few people in. We do have a video on that on the channel, so you can go check out our border predictions video if you want to know a little bit more information about that. Boom. Uh... Nirav Patel says thank you and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year, Nirav. Uh, Masi says thank you very much for the information, dear. You're very welcome. Clay is uh, giving you guys a bit more information. If you do have kids in New Zealand during the summer holidays, they get between six and eight weeks of, uh, of holiday time. So you have to keep them busy for six to eight wow. weeks, depending on the age level. Uh, Clay, good luck. Uh, <laughs> Christina says, uh, yeah, he's talking about Canada and says Canada is really beautiful. But um, she also says that the winter here can be awful. So here you go, especially if you don't like the cold. I was in Vancouver most of my time in, uh, when I was in Canada, and they were okay. It was just really rainy. Um, but I suppose I, it depends where about. Yeah, I, I hear Vancouver is probably like the warmest part of Canada. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Clay says, Novotel, uh, where we are staying, has a good deal, uh, 130 with meal and 70 without. Is it per person or just... Um, that sounds probably per yeah, person. Yeah, it sounds like per person. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I still, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think that... I mean, we it, always find cheaper <laughs> than the Novotel, but that is that is a good deal for that hotel yeah. chain, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, Massey says, uh, I think he's talking about uh, TSS and Slow too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he says, Masi says, I live in Afghanistan and our case with Immigration New Zealand is in processing. I want to know when they will start working on, when you start working. So right now they're kind of working on their backlog and everything. So don't expect anything until middle of the year. Um, maybe they're going to start, you know, they're going to start earlier and everything, but middle of 2021, probably that's when they're going to, you know, start reprocessing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Abraham says, watching from Nigeria, really need your guys' help. I am with my NZ work visa and I don't know when I should be coming. Well, right now you just can't, right? Because you can't come to New Zealand because the borders are closed. So right now we can help you. We just are all waiting to see when the borders will reopen so more people can come to travel in New Zealand. So first thing to keep in mind is that we must be a travel channel. We're not here really much to talk too much about immigration in New Zealand uh, because we're not a registered immigration advisor. So we can't really talk too much about that. It's just has been a big topic lately. So that's why we talked about it. The thing I think I need to keep in mind is that the borders are currently closed and nobody knows even the government even immigration new zealand doesn't know when the border will reopen so nobody will be able to give you any information right now the only thing you can do is wait and see and uh, the last thing you need to keep in mind is that the situation is always evolving so it changes all the time so even if you get any information right now and you've been told yeah in december that's that's basically what we've been predicting right we predict that the borders of new zealand may reopen in november december 2021 or in 2022 that's all thoughts right the situation is always changing. If there is a new variant of the of the virus that you know ravages the, the the whole planet again, then that's going to be pushed again. Or if you no, know, the vaccine are proven to be, you know, perfectly effective on everybody at all time. The ball opened before. It's so flexible that you yeah. never know uh, when things are going to change. So right now, the only thing we can tell you about Abraham is just you have to just wait and see. Um, Clay is having a laugh. Uh, Yashwin says, I am from India, planning to settle to New Zealand. In which district weather will be okay at New Zealand? So the best weather in New Zealand is found in Marlborough, around the Nelson area, isn't it? Uh, if if uh, sunshine is what you're looking for, I then... I think that's what they are looking for. Yeah, so Nelson is um, is 
branded as the sunniest city in New Zealand because it does receive the highest amount of sunshine hours. Um, but if you're looking for the warmest temperatures, then you might be better off going up to Northland, which is the um, which is the region just above Auckland on the North Island. That's where you'll find basically the warmest temperatures. And since um, New Zealand is below the equator, basically the further south you go down New Zealand, the colder it, it gets or the colder the climate climate is so if you're looking for warmer weather then you're best to keep um up north basically all right so the warmest weather which we will be in the northland region which is ab above Auckland. so if you look at the map of new zealand you get Auckland. anything above that will be the warmest weather and the highest amount of sun hours will be the northern south island so we take the south island you put a, a line and you look at the town of nelson this is about this area um, if I had to take a pick, I would pick Nelson because there's so many, many, many beautiful places yes. to explore around the area. So that would be my personal choice. But um, yeah, yeah. Northland is pretty beautiful as well. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, uh, San Sunny Dia Bandoni says, hello, guys. Do you guys know anything about badminton sport culture in New Zealand? Absolutely not. <laughs> nope. It was uh, worth asking, but yeah. no, that's not really something we know much about at all. Um yeah. We play squash, though. So we that, play that's, squash. That's not badminton. It's not badminton, no. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, I've never really heard much about it, but I'm pretty sure you can, if you type badminton New Zealand, you probably will be able to find more information on Google. Uh, you'll be able to find some, um, some, some information about maybe the badminton, New, New Zealand Badminton Federation. There is probably one of those, and they'll be able to point you out in the right direction, yeah. uh, I think. Uh, MB says he liked Vancouver. Yeah, it's an awesome town. It's really, really, uh, it's a cool town. But again, it's in Canada. Um, and yeah, Clay was talking about purpose. And of course, um, Krishna says she's living near Ottawa. I need to remember that uh, you are in Canada and not in um, in Australia. I keep on always thinking you're in Australia. Uh, she said uh, say it can get as cold as minus 45 degrees Celsius with a wind chill. I would prefer weather, uh, the weather I see in New Zealand for sure. Yes, I think oh, minus 45 oh, yeah. is pretty extreme. Um, if you're an emperor penguin, I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if, <laughs> you, know if, if you are you know, a polar bear, you're fine as well, I think. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for something a bit more milder, <laughs> New Zealand is, is probably a bit more milder. Yeah, that's for Definitely sure. Definitely doesn't get as cold as that. Um, Michael is responding to you, Sanidia. Um, there are a number of badminton clubs in New Zealand. Uh, there are at least four in Auckland, uh, with the main two in Epsom and in North Shore. The North Shore one uh, was 24 hours open, 24 hours a day as well, and very well maintained with a store there as well. Oh, cool. nice. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Here you go. Nice that's, information. That's some good information. I love the fact that we kind of use the community as well. You know, we got Clay telling us about the, the school holiday. We got Michael, uh, badminton extraordinaire. I love yes. that. That's awesome, guys. You rock. Um, Yashwin, you're asking which one of the best place to settle in New Zealand. We have Clay that uh, is uh, suggesting to settle in Dunedin because he's from there. Mm -hmm. Um but you, you, Dunedin is a really awesome place. I don't think you settled there for the weather. No, uh, to definitely be quite not honest, for the but weather. But it's an amazing place. There's so many awesome places to visit. There are great people over there. There's a guy called Clay over there. He's fantastic. <laughs> uh, but no, there's really a lot of awesome stuff to do there. The town has a very different feel. I feel like it's one of the most unique city mm. in New Zealand because it has this very, like, is it Scottish heritage? Is yes, it does yeah. have Scottish So this old Scottish heritage is like more stone buildings and all that, which you don't necessarily see a lot in New Zealand. So yeah. it's a really... Really cool uh, place to visit. But uh, yeah, weather-wise, it's, it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you'll find anywhere in New Zealand, the weather is probably very different to what um, a lot of people would consider as nice weather because the weather changes all the time. New Zealand's weather just, it doesn't really stay the same for more than a day. It can be rainy, <laughs> sunny, um, really chilly and windy. So um, yeah, wherever you are in New Zealand, I think when you start to live in New Zealand, you realise that um, you can't really... Yeah, you can't really sort of run your life around the weather. You just have to get on with things and if you do get what wet, you, you want get to wet, do. Yeah. yeah, as long as you're prepared and you have all the right... Um, yeah, as long as you have a raincoat, you should be fine. <laughs> Damien Brown says, Can a person come to New Zealand with an e-work visa at the moment? No. Um, that's pretty simple. Um, mm. At the moment, no. Uh, there are some very, very limited exceptions, but um, in 99% of the cases, no. 
Um, the borders are closed right now, so that's just um, not an option at the moment. Wow. Uh, you will have to wait for a border opening or new policy changes. And yeah, you feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel. We know we will do some videos to update you guys. We do some border opening predictions as well regularly. So feel free to hit the subscribe button. By the way, guys, if you find uh, all the answers we're giving you useful um, and you want to say thank you to us, uh, the very simple way uh, to do that is to click the like button because it's free and it tells YouTube that we're useful and, you know, we're kind of helpful. We get like 29 of you guys watching right now. So, uh, yeah, we'd love to see 20, 29 likes. That'd be lovely. Well, what are you looking at? Well, I just looked at the next question that we have, Before what is um, from Yashwin saying, what is your opinion about um, Kane Williamson or Kane Williamson? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. I just had to Google who that was because I, it? I, it's a cricketer. It's a New Zealand cricketer. Okay. Again, we are not very... I did try cricket. Uh, wait. Oh, I yes. just wanted to... I'm not a cricket professional. Now, I'll, you know, during our New Year's barbecue, I never tried to play cricket in my life. And obviously, hanging out with Kiwis, they always have a cricket... Whiskets? Is that whiskets? Oh, some wickets Wickets, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, they had those things set up and, uh, you know, they gave me the bat and, you know, I got to cricket a little bit i'll be honest i did hold it like a baseball bat at the beginning because that is how much i know about cricket um to the great laughters of everybody i mean yes. a bit of a full of myself <laughs> so i tried cricket and i did hit the ball so i am now a professional so um my opinion on that cricket player is that i can i can i can beat him yes i, I definitely I'm, I'm cricket master now yeah so yeah well we do know a lot about traveling in new zealand <laughs> we we lack any sort of knowledge on badminton in New yeah. Zealand and cricket in New Zealand, I'm afraid. I'm not really sports. Pretty much sports. any sports in New Zealand we are not very up on. We know about snow sports, perhaps. Yeah, we, 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 we hike know, a lot as well. We know so about, yeah. you know, like extreme sports like whitewater rafting, all this sort of thing. That skydiving. We've done. Skydiving, but in terms of competitive <laughs> sports, you're probably not going to find too much answers from us, I'm yeah. afraid. <laughs> so that's why we refer to other people. So uh, if you guys have, uh, if any of you guys have an opinion on Kane Wheeler, some the cricket player feel free to uh, to write it down right now when we have questions about rugby we usually uh, refer to uh, the uh, our in-house referee um, extreme talauta which is a rugby referee yeah so yeah so we, we, ba we you know we get help from the community it's more fun i don't think i got that many likes out of uh, out of being that bad at cricket uh, knowledge Speaking of Extreme Talauta, he says, well, guys, see you next week. Uh, time for a run um, for the rugby before the rugby league season starts. Nice. Nice. Enjoy. Uh, Sandy Diaz says, thank you, guys. Michael St Stace. Yeah, I think Stace. Michael Stace says, I'm doing the seal swim in Kaikura this afternoon. I watched you guys do it and I had to do it. Yes. Yeah. My favorite activity to do in New Zealand. You're absolutely going to love it. Can you say hi to them for us? Just say that the team from NZ Pocket Guide say hi. Just say Robin and Laura says hi. Oh my gosh, I love it. You're going to have a blast this afternoon, man. You're going to love it. My tip, don't move too much in the water. You know, like a ton of people, they tend to be like kind of moving a lot in the water, trying to chair the, the seal. Honestly, the best thing to do is put your head in the water with the, with the tuba coming out. So, you know, you can the snorkel. breathe. The yeah. snorkel coming yeah. out. So, you know, you can breathe. It's better. <laughs> but you just kind of float like that and the seals are going to come to you. Uh, you know, seriously, don't move too much. Don't do too much movement and everything. You're just going to scare them away. So mm. just float and enjoy. It is so much fun. And if you have to move, just go like slow and steady with your feet in the back. Of, you know, like don't move your arms, you know. Yeah. Um, either like that for stability or either alongside your body and just move with your legs. And they come really close. Like, uh, oh, my gosh. Simi swimming with seals is amazing. You are going to love it. Yeah, that's Oh, exciting. I got excited just yeah. for him right now. Ah, you're going to love it, mate. Whew, I got excited. Christina says, so would you recommend doing December uh, into January for the full month of January, Christmas uh, slash New Year's? Will those time cause issues with finding places to stay? Those are the busiest time when traveling in New Zealand. So everything is super full. Like even us driving from like one town to another right now, we see literally the camping sites being like tents on top of tents on top of tents. Like it's super chocker full. So this yes. is by far the busiest place of the year. So you will need to book really early. Uh, if you want to actually uh, aim for those places. Yeah. If you can get your trip booked early enough because you don't know if the borders are going to be open, which you know may happen in 2021, um, uh, the locals will have everything booked um, yeah. you know, instead of you. So that's going to be a bit tricky. So I would say if by September you haven't booked your trip, I think that the Christmas and the New Year's period is going to be a tough one to actually be mm. able to have booked. Stuff. I would definitely recommend traveling any other time than yeah. basically the, those days. You could be doing said. like after the 10th of, after, well, yeah, after the 8th or 10th of January. Yeah. After that, 
oh, you'll be sweet through the whole month. You'll be sorted. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Mahi Mahi saying, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Christina says, we are planning four weeks now and we are adding the shark diving, as I mentioned before. Yep. Cool. And we know they don't start until December. Yeah, ah, so yes. there is obviously season in that. So yeah, I, I will go. I personally, for my own taste, I will try to skip the Christmas New Year period just because, uh, you know, just and there's so much more people on the road and everything. So I just try to skip that to have a better experience afterwards. Yeah. But it's just my, obviously, my own experience. If you're fine with crowds, you'll be, you'll be absolutely fine as well. Just make sure that you book early because, yeah, it is tough to find accommodation right now. Even finding an Airbnb at the moment, we have a, we, we were talking about with, with some friends, uh, you know, that were at the barbecue over there. They were actually struggling finding Airbnbs in places. Mm. Um. Clay says, give us uh, 13 in Dunedin and we're out in shorts and cooking barbecue. So here you go. You wanted to ask about the weather in New Zealand. 13 degrees, for them it's summer. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MB says, uh, January will have been better than uh, better weather, Christina. I don't know will really change that much between December and January, to be quite honest. But I think usually it's a little, little wetter in December. Like what I've noticed um, the past yeah. few years, it's usually... Uh, December's usually a little more rainy and then it starts to dry out a bit more in, in January. So I think there tends to be less rainy days in January, depending on which part of the country you're in. But yeah. Uh, Michael has some suggestion for Dunedin. He says the Dunedin walking tour is fantastic. Looking at the whole historical building with the coffee shop along the way, doing it uh, again this year. It's well worth oh, it. Oh, nice. Nice. Cool. I bet you stop at the brewery after that. Mm -hmm. um, Emmanuel says Happy New Year Happy New Year Happy New Year <laughs> Alberto Santa Barbara Country County California says we are trying to plan our trip can you quickly mention the timelines for opening and the process they are required to go so there is no timeline officially, right? There is nobody that actually has officially announced when will the border reopen. We have a prediction and we have a full video on the channel. But our prediction is November, December 2021 at the earliest, probably in 2022. That's our timeline. For as, um, as far as the process required to go and everything like that, there is absolutely no information on that right now. So we're not going to venture having any, mm. um, any kind of guesses just yet. Yeah, I think the... the We're planning your trip right now to come to New Zealand. The thing you can plan now is basically, um, you know, like what Christina's doing, planning what they want to do within the amount of time that they would have. For instance, if you're here for four weeks, plan what you would want to do, where you want to go around New Zealand, but don't actually book anything or decide exactly what date you're leaving to come to New Zealand yet because there's absolutely no information to say when the borders are actually going to open and you definitely shouldn't book anything before the borders are open because you could just be wasting your money or it then um, if you know it'll, your bookings for flights will end up being credit for a flight that you might not necessarily want to use that airline later for instance so it's just best to just book what I mean sorry just plan what you want to do but don't actually plan any dates don't book anything just yet she's right you know <laughs> uh okay lenny annie says happy new year happy new year lenny thank you very much for a bit of love by the way guys if you find a video useful hit like we have 14 like 27 viewers i think we can make that even because we're being super useful right and if we're useful you need to click like i think I think <laughs> my heart's not into works. it today. Okay, <laughs> it was New Year not that long ago. My heart is not into pushing people to click like today. Um, <laughs> Christina says thank you to MB. I love that little community. I love it. Robert says I gotta go feed the polar bear now. Bears now. What? Uh, <laughs> nice. Catch you next week. Bonne année. He says bonne année is the French way to say Happy New Year. So here you oh, go. Cool. Are you feeding the polar bears? Okay. Uh, Emmanuel says. <laughs> <laughs> Will students be allowed into New Zealand before the border opens? Maybe. We, we're not 100% sure yet. There hasn't been anything announced. But obviously, uh, stu students in New Zealand are very different type of travelers, right? Because for students going to do the quarantine, uh, which is 14 days, if you come to study for an entire semester in New Zealand, that may be worth it. Uh, but I don't think there will be a load quarantine less, that's for sure. And uh, remember that the quarantine fee is 3,100 New Zealand dollars, and you know um, it, it's, it's not cheap. And uh, so maybe, but again, there has been no announcement. We think that perhaps around you know the, the later part of the year, there may be some, uh, some opening, so maybe around like September or something, but we're not sure, nothing official just yet. Stay tuned. We will tell you when things change. Um, 
Yashwin says, in order to get a New Zealand citizenship, how long should I stay in New Zealand? We can give you uh, immigration advice, Yashwin. We are a travel channel here and we are not registered immigration advisor. For this reason, it is illegal for us to give you immigration advice. So you will have to direct this question to Immigration New Zealand directly and you can find them at immigration.govt.nz. Um, MB is asking Christina if she's planning a road trip or some city stopovers. Uh, he says that he hates driving. Uh, so they're all having a chat. I'm just going to skip all your personal conversation and I'm going to move on to uh, Hishan. Uh, Hishan. If you guys are asking us questions, by the way, you can definitely just uh, yeah, ask. Uh, Hishan says, Happy New Year, Laura. Robin. Coming <laughs> after a long time. Yes, it has been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, Hishan. Happy New Year to mm. you too. Um, I hope that you're feeling well and I hope that you, know, you have great hopes for 2021 and that everything will happen for you. Michael says, we hit the roads from February onwards every year. December and January is way too busy for us. So that's echoing what we're um, telling you, Christina. Yeah. He says, everyone leaves Auckland then. And the weather is also better from then on. So, okay, well, then if uh, everybody agrees that the weather is better, I will yield yes. and say, yes, okay, yes. the weather is better. I just, I just feel like the weather is so changeable in New Zealand that it's so hard to actually define between like the summer months, like which one is actually best or not. Mm. Um, okay, then we have a Ruwani that says, hey, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Ruwani. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for joining us for a live session. That's awesome. Uh, Mahi Mahi says, guys, what about international students um, uh, uh, that have applied from the last four months? Now I am worried. Um, so if you apply in the last four months, sadly, you know, it's going to take quite a while. I just don't think that's happening until, as mentioned, uh, even if you applied before, it, it doesn't matter if the borders are closed, the borders are closed. That doesn't change when you can come to New Zealand. They will let you come to New Zealand when they decide to open the borders. So, yeah, our gut feeling is, uh, you know, not before the uh, mid to end next year. That's still our gut feeling, even for people that have applied before. We have some friends which have had a visa and were literally about to come in New Zealand in April and they couldn't make it into New Zealand. And they still have the visa approved and everything. They still cannot come to New Zealand and we don't think they're coming until you know uh, November December 2021 or in 2022 and we told them that oh I missed a question from Ishan yes. Ishan is asking a quick question have you guys been to the Omanawa Falls is it safe to go there well, we personally have not been to Omanawa Falls, but we do know of this waterfall near Taranga because it is always in the media for being, uh, yes, like you say, um, kind of known for having a bit of a dangerous reputation. Kind of dangerous. Yes. So um, there were a, a couple of years ago, there were, it was actually closed. The walk to get down there was closed, but then they realized that people were just going to go there anyway. So now, it, although the walk to go there is open, there are signs everywhere saying, how, you know, it's dangerous to go on the tracks down to get there. And a lot of people do get injured. You know, if you're not, if you're not nimble on your feet, it can, you, you know, it's got some quite. Um, there are so many other waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's got, it, it, although it's, it's a very beautiful waterfall, it is, um, you know, it's not easy access to get there. Um, I think in 2018, I think someone did actually drown there as well by swimming there. So it is kind of like you go at your own risk, basically. Um, so there are loads of signs to say that it is it is dangerous and it's but people do still go there anyway and they take that risk. Um, you know, but it depends. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. But in New Zealand, there are hundreds of waterfalls and, and so and, yeah. you, there's always other options and there's also there's many beautiful Find waterfalls <laughs> yeah <laughs> we do have um listicles on nz pocket guide to show you um about 25 of our favorite waterfalls and which are safe to go to which are easy and safe to go to um and yeah there's but there's literally hundreds and you're never too far away from a waterfall in new zealand so um i mean our good feeling is it's not worth going there yes in short. exactly yeah. so we've chosen not to go there because we have decided to go elsewhere um but yeah i mean we we would recommend to go elsewhere as well i think yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, and to be fair, it's not that beautiful anyway. Um, now we've seen pictures like, yeah, it's, it's pretty, but you know, like there are some waterfalls which are more, I think the 25 one that we prefer, actually, all 25 of them are better than the, mm. uh, this one. Yeah. So, yeah, so as, um, you know, so NZ Pocket Guide is actually, you know, our travel guide to New Zealand. It's actually the largest travel guide to New Zealand. So, we kind of feel also responsibility sometimes. So, for that reason, we actually don't mention that waterfall 
on the guides, although it do exist and we talk about almost everything there is to do in New Zealand. We just think since it's really dangerous and everything, we just kind of like don't talk about it and talk about other stuff, which yeah. are better to do. So if you're new, you could go to McLe uh, no, McLaren Falls, yep. sorry. So McLaren Falls Park on the entrance to the park, you get to see some cool cascading waterfalls but then actually when you get to the park there's a small waterfall walk and um, so you could go to see two waterfalls in that area there's also another waterfall in the area which um i know it begins with a k but the name does escape me but there are other waterfall options basically in toranga that, that are much easier and safer to go to all right next question is from charles iwu chuku wu uh i think I, maybe i pronounced that terribly i'm sorry charles I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He says, hi, guys. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Charles. He says, I love New Zealand a lot, and I want to live there with my wife to work and further my education. Please, I want to know what will it cost me and my wife to get there? Um, so we're not an immigration channel. And, uh, you know, in New Zealand, there's a law that states that we do not have the right to give immigration advice if you mean not registered immigration advisor, which neither law are I at. Ah, so one of the uh, advice that we can give you is to head to immigration.govt.nz. That's their website. And you actually have a full um, questionnaire that you can answer. You know, it's electronic questions. And then it tells you which are the visas you can apply to. And it gives you the whole cost and everything on there. So I think, you know, by going right to the official uh, source, you'll be able to get all the information you need. Yeah. So I would advise you to do that. Mahmoud Altanayeb says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Happy Mahmoud. New Year. Uh, it says, uh, quick question, is a chef cook in demand as a job? Uh, well, I have a mate which is a chef in Topo, and due to COVID, he was let go, and now he's working in the insulation business. So I will say not at the moment, but usually on a you know normal kind of year and everything, you know, when there are tourists and everything. So, you know, looking at 2024 and beyond when the tourism may restart, uh, because there has been projected by the New Zealand government that tourism will not... Uh, you know, really restart at kind of full-fledged until 2024 and beyond. So in 2024 and beyond, yes, it probably will be in demand because usually we tend to see quite a lot of advertisement for chef and cook businesses. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, positions. Lenny Annie says, how often we, uh, one will f uh, feel tremors and earthquake? I have heard uh, it in one of the videos, not yours. Um, or is it mild to feel? I've lived in New Zealand for about 10 years. I felt... Three earthquake at most, probably two. Uh, I won't say three because I don't want to lie, but I can remember one for sure. I remember one time that Laura felt it, but I didn't. So that's two. And I, I'm adding one just not to be a liar. So that's, <laughs> that's what it is. So very, very rarely. And literally it would be like, and yeah. that would be pretty much it, right? So it's very rare. It depends where you live in New Zealand as well, but it's it's very, very rare. And major earthquakes, which actually are damaging properties and uh, and killing people, are even more rare. So, yeah. Uh, let's ask uh, Clay, MB, and Michael. How often would you say in the last 10 years did you actually feel an earthquake? If you can give me numbers. So I know Michael, Clay, and MB are all living in New Zealand. So uh, that'd be interesting to actually have that. If we can get a, a bit of a pull from the community, that'd be lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so you get an even better answer, Lenny. Um, MB says, Robbie and Laura, it may be worthwhile getting immigration advisor certification. No, really, because we want to be a travel channel, right? We don't really want to go into the whole immigration system because it's very different. It's not the fun part of exploring New Zealand and all that. So that's not necessarily the thing that we're interested in. It feels like it's something that since COVID, we've been kind of dragged quite a lot into with all those questions, and it's fine. We answer them to the best of our abilities, and we inform people on to when will the border be opening, but we want to stay into the travel uh, travel niche, right? Yeah. This YouTube channel is just an extension of our website, and our website is really just for traveler. And I feel like there's a lot of people that do a better job than us in something, you know, everybody's an expert in something nowadays. And I feel like we're more of an expert for like the travel part. And I feel like one of the things which is important in life is to actually know what you're good at and just stick to doing what you're good at. Um, there's too many people that try to do too many things and they do too many things averagely. I feel like I'll just, I just feel like, you know, it's better for us to just do one thing and doing it very well. Yeah. And that's how you guys will get better value as well from, uh, you know, the information we give you. So I feel that'd be kind of, um, that'd be that. I don't know. I think it yields a better result if we just focus on the one thing. And, and Immigration New Zealand, to be fair, is doing absolutely fantastic job on their website with so much information. I just think a lot of people just 
want something uh, easier like talking to someone but um you know if you just if we just point them to the website that'll be fine obviously mm -hmm. it's just our personal opinion um but you know that's that's a good thing as well when you run your own business you kind of get to choose what you want to do so yeah that's the that's the part that we want to do yeah um charles says watching live from nigeria keep it up guys i love your video well done thank you charles you're awesome Michael says 39 days, 13 hours, 17 seconds until we commence our annual South Islands a tour for six weeks. But we're not counting. <laughs> nice. yeah, no, it doesn't look like you're counting. 39 days. That means we basically will see you for about like five more times and then you'll be on the roads and we're not going to see you for, for six weeks. We're going to have a uh, we're going to be like uh, wondering. We should have a little chat. So like, where is Michael today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Okay, MB says uh, immigration advisor licensing is handled by the Immigration Advisor Authority, which is separate from Immigration New Zealand. Yep, it is. So it's a different authority that gives people a certification. Um, and, you know, not, not everybody is, I don't know. I don't know if their criteria, criteria are good enough, uh, you know, from my personal opinion, from my own experience. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they give them stuff. And, yeah, uh, that's why we refer to Immigration New Zealand because that's the official source of information anyway. Yeah. Matthias Zupokrai says, Happy New Year! I was Happy like, watch his HPN. Yeah. Like, it's Happy New Year, I love it. Happy New Year to you too, mate. Says, uh, do you guys know if it is illegal to download content from, example, YouTube or torrent files? In some countries, it's not a big deal, but what about in New Zealand? I think it's illegal, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really know, um, to be fair. People do it, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's one of those things because I think it is illegal in in a, a, quite a few countries, but people still do it anyway because yeah, it's hard to track. I'm not. I think it sure. might be hard to track. So yeah. yeah, that's not not another area that's not really in our expertise yeah. is um is the law. law. <laughs> <laughs> We're not lawyers, but that's yeah. a good question, Matthias. I, I, we just we just don't know, so we don't we don't want to mislead you. So we'll say I don't know. I guess mm. it's illegal because it is in most countries, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, there are some countries like Tonga where it's not illegal at all and you can download everything you want. That I know because there are some shops <laughs> in Tonga when you go in Tonga where you buy movies by the gigabyte. So it's like, I think it's $2 per gigabyte and you just go there and you say, I want this, 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 this and that and you just plug your USB stick and they, they just give it to you because they download it for you and they give it to you and you pay by gigabyte. It's very weird to walk yeah. in front. <laughs> oh, do you remember the sign shop which had like all the adventures on there? Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah, so yeah. So you drive and they just take like all the Avengers and they were like the, uh, it was a fried chicken shop, I think, or something like that. And it was like the Avengers fried chicken shop. You had Captain America with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. I love it. I love Tonga. I don't know if you know that. By the way, check TongaPocketGuy.com or Travel Guide to Tonga. Clay says he seconds Michael. It says uh, Clay usually work through and uh, take a break in uh, the end of January or February once the weather is hot and constant. Plus, destination doesn't aren't as full on and busy. Here you yeah, go, Christina. There you go. Everybody advise you not to travel. Do, no, a bit later. Yeah, a bit later. <laughs> Sada Freeman says, uh, "Will I get visa on request if I'm applying for a partner visa?" Oh, well, you have to meet all the conditions. You have to pay all the fees. And uh, yeah, so you have to do all that. But right now, immigration is in as a massive backlog. And they're actually not even processing visas at the moment. So I will say just wait until the end of the year before you start applying. Michael says the Kaitai Falls uh, is one you're thinking of. Yes. Uh, great work. That was the one but also that I was thinking steep. of. Yeah. Look at that. So I love the fact that people are here to kind yeah. of complete our... Like, so that's we another know, option if you're looking for a waterfall near Taranga. The Kaitai Falls is hey, another go. cool option. Um, MB says, no, I see, I see a connection between uh, travel and immigration. There is, obviously, but, uh, yeah. you know, like what we usually talk to people is people which are, you know, on visitor's visa. And so, therefore, there's not need of the immigration advisor for that. Sometimes you get people on the working holiday visa, which is more, more that gap year visa, but that's, that's as far as it usually goes. Lenny say... Thank you guys for responding. Good going. Waiting for more stuff from your side. You guys are really amazing. Love your interaction. God bless. Oh, that's a lovely message. Nice, thank thank you. you so much, Lenny. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the questions as well. Okay, so we were talking about the uh, earthquake, right? So Clay says, in the last 10 years, I've felt at least five earthquakes, uh, three of which I knew were earthquake right away, and the other were like, what was that sound? Uh, did the truck drive by and then looked at the GeoNet, which is an app, um, and uh, it was an earthquake. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'll show you quickly the app, what it looks like. Uh, I think every Kiwi has GeoNet on their, on their phone. 
Uh, here you go. So that's the GeoNet app right here. It kind of tells you like where where all the latest earthquake in New Zealand. So there's some every day, right? But most of them you don't um, you don't feel them whatsoever. Does it tell you about the volcanic activity? Yeah, as well? it also give you volcanic activities. Yeah. So here you go. In the last ten years, he felt three. Uh, three that I knew were earthquake and, and two that were kind of like, oh, just a, a tiny bit of a shake. What about you, Michaels? Uh, how many earthquakes do you re re remember feeling in the last 10 years? Mm. Um, but yeah, keep going with, uh, with that. I like, I like those kind of questions. They're interesting. By the way, if you find what we're doing use useful, hit the like button. Ah, okay, I feel like a today my heart's not into it. Yeah. I'm still recovering from New Year's, guy. <laughs> guys. Okay, uh, GP... Yeah. GP says, when is the border open for international students intake in 2021? Well, um, we have covered this question quite a lot in today's live session, but basically there's been no official announcement for when the borders will open to international students. Um, and uh, yeah, but basically there's we have some predictions on our prediction video, which you can find easily on the channel. Um, we do cover what has been um, said or predicted for the international students. So it's best to go and check that video out. But yeah, basically there's been no official information. We just don't know yet when the borders are open to international students, I'm afraid. Michael says, sorry, guys, I will still be watching. Uh, I have mobile data. Oh, no, we're really happy that you'll be watching. You have to tell us every time you watch you on the road, you have to tell us where you are. It's, it's, it's yes. going to be fun. And we'll use the map and we'll point people. Like, we'll tell yeah. them, this is where Michael is now. He's at the Molesworth Station or yeah. he's at Reefton. Or... I don't think, I, to be fair, I think if you stay at Molesworth Station through Sunday, I don't think you're going to have coverage over there. It's quite Yeah, remote, maybe not, so actually. There yeah. may be some spots where you don't have coverage. He says, I can't miss my Sunday morning coffee and the live cast. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, Ruwani says, what are the new updates for family visas? Uh, so as far as we know right now, there's no updates. So it's still the same that we were talking about last week and the week before and the week before. You can check out our video with our the opening predictions. To find that, it's really simple. You just go on our channel, you click on videos, and you find the latest video with the thumbnail, which is bright yellow and red. It is on New Zealand border opening predictions. But to give you a quick uh, spoiler right here, we're thinking that the border of New Zealand may only reopen not before November, December 2021, or more possibly and more likely in 2022 only. Lenny is thanking Clay for giving some more information about the... Uh, uh, and how much it felt. I actually do find that quite interesting how, like, the big difference that we felt between, you know, like, here I feel like, you know, the northern end, I probably felt like, you know, as I say, three, and I'm thinking I'm lying, it was probably just two, but in the southern end, it, it had five, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, Michael, still speaking about the earthquake, he says, in the last seven years, we have one in Auckland while at work, uh, went on the road and sent our note, uh, two rocking and rolling, these two, and one at Cheviot, so that would be one in Auckland, one in St. Arnold, and one in Cheviot. So that would be three that you felt in the last seven years. That's yeah. specific, Michael. I like that. So here you go. That's uh, that's Michael, another local for you, Lenny, uh, that gives you some information about the uh, the earthquake in New Zealand. So boom. Uh, Charles says, please, which time uh, do your program always comes on air? Because I want to be uh, following you guys anytime you're uh, live. Thank you, guys. You're really amazing. And I pray to meet you guys live when I come over New Zealand. Nice. That's cool. lovely. So at this time, every single week. So it's at um, 8 a.m. Sunday New Zealand time every single week. It doesn't change. It's always the same thing. What you can do is you can subscribe to the channel and I also always post uh, all our video live. Uh, so right now, if you go basically on the page on the channel, you will see all our live videos. So you can set reminders. And there's also a link below uh, with a little time, uh, time, time sheet that tells you when we're going to be live. Yeah. And as Clay says, uh, that's a good segue to the end. <laughs> yeah, that that's question. true. <laughs> Very good. Um, Anthony says, stay safe. And I'm there. Look at that. Clay's even like wrapping it up for us. That's yeah, a good segue like, to oh, the end. Thank you very much, Charles. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, I yes. Mean, you guys should just do the live chat for us. One day we should literally just read what they say. We'll have Clay doing the introduction. Yeah. We'll have uh, Michael giving us some like uh, questions and everything. We need some people that say, do you remember to like? And that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. 22 viewers and 22 likes. You guys are awesome. That's cool. I like to finish Thanks, like guys. that. Thanks, guys. Okay, so we have Jonathan Vincent that says, Hi, I uh, popped in a lot late, but I just want to say Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year, New Jonathan. Sadaf says, Good job, guys. Keep it up and thanks for answering. You're very welcome, Sadaf. Zishan says, When will the border open? Please reply or replay. Replay is in the movie Alien. Reply, 
is on a video. Uh, if you click on our channel, you click on video, and there is a border opening predictions, and you can watch this entire video uh, about 10, 15 minutes, and we talk about when the border will reopen for New Zealand. It was brand new information. Clay is laughing at my face. Very correct. <laughs> you should do that. Uh, Christina says, stay safe too. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Have a wonderful week in Canada, Christina. Dishan says, any update on the border opening? Uh, yes, uh, check our video. Uh, we have a video update with all that. Michael says, have a great week, guys. And uh, Christina says, thank you, Robin, Laura, MB, and Michael. Great info. Just wish we could come over sooner. We wish yeah. you were here sooner, too. All right, guys. Again, Happy New Year. Thank you very much for watching. In the year 2021, we didn't have the time to uh, look at what we're going to be doing in 2021, but we're still going to be doing those videos. So let's chat next week about that. Bye-bye. See you next Stay week. Stay safe. And Happy New Year. Yes. Mm -hmm.